Welcome to the application delivery how-to video series. My name is Gary, and today we're going to cover how to easily handle false positives directly from the application logs of your web application firewall. Let's get started. I've enabled the web application firewall on my critical web app. Anytime you have a new app or policy, the first task is to clean up the false positives. Uh, this is the starting point whenever you are tuning a new policy against an application. A false positive is simply any valid transaction that triggers a violation. You'll also want to make sure your policy is in detect mode rather than in force. Detect logs all violations without blocking, and force mode logs all violations and blocks. Best practice is to keep your policy in detect until you are no longer seeing false positives uh, to keep your WAF from blocking valid transactions. Fortunately, VMware's Avi WAF allows admins to easily identify and handle false positives directly from the application logs. Let me quickly demo how this works. If we click on the WAF enabled virtual service and go to logs, uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to select our time frame uh, that, that's relevant for us. The next thing we want to do is go into our filter bar. If I type in WAF into my filter bar, it gives me all of the WAF objects that I'm allowed to filter on. Uh, for this example, I'm going to filter on WAF log status. And my WAF log status is going to be equal to flagged. If my policy was in blocked mode, my WAF log status would be equal to rejected. So now that I have my timeline configured and I have, and I'm only viewing the flagged transactions, I can further sort my logs uh, using various WAF analytics. So I can sort based on WAF tags. Uh, I can sort based on individual rules, or I can sort based on groups. Now I'm going to sort based on SQL injection because uh, I really want to uh, focus on SQL injection first. Uh, and I'm going to go into uh, this post uh, for contacts. Now, I've already validated with my application team that contacts does not, uh, is not connected to SQL in any way. Uh, and any SQL violations are false positives for sure. Um, now, one of the things that we'll notice within this particular transaction is we have our WAF latency. How much latency did this transaction add to, uh, to the transaction? But more importantly, I've got my SQL injection uh, rule that was a uh, group that was triggered here. Now, if I do the drop down, I can see all the individual rules uh, within the SQL injection group that were triggered based on this violation. Now, all these plus icons here give me the ability to add an exception for these rules directly in the application log. Now, because there's more than a couple, uh, what I'd rather do is come up to the top to my group itself and add my exception directly to the group. This way, all the other violations that triggered within uh, this transaction will also get this particular exception. Now, my exceptions, I can do any subnet. Uh, it's possible that maybe I only want to let internal subnets uh, I'll be allowed to use this, uh, this exception. Um, either way, I can configure it here. Uh, my URI path slash context is a uh, uh, contacts is static. Uh, I can use regular expressions to uh, to make that more dynamic. Uh, same thing with my arguments. But more importantly, once I click save, this particular once I click save, this particular violation uh, takes effect immediately, or this particular exception takes effect immediately. What that allows me to do is go down the line and continue to uh, to search out these violations, find out if they're false positives, and repair them quickly. Another method I could use is I can come directly into my WAF logs. Here we can see the rule hits against the chosen time frame. This helps analyze flagged and denied requests along with their corresponding trigger. We can click on any element uh, in each field to create a specific filter. I'm going to create a, a filter based on FAQ and SQL injection. So I've already validated with the app team that uh, along with contacts, FAQ is also not connected to the backend SQL. So exceptions here are perfectly valid. Now, these logs allow me to reset the filters so that I can start over, uh, or I can preview the exception that it's going to create. You'll notice that this exception uh, looks exactly the same as it does within the log. Uh, we're creating them the same way, and I can simply just add this exception for FAQ the same way that I did for slash contacts. The other thing I can do is preview this sort uh, within my logs. So if I open in logs, it takes me right back to the initial um, uh, application logs that we started with, with the proper filters so that I can come through and create additional exceptions to handle my false positives. Thanks for watching. Please check out our other exciting videos in our application delivery how-to series.